That's right, tough guy. We seem to be experimenting some technological differences. Welcome to 3NN Podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to 3NN 34. Wow, my God, we're getting there. Hey. Um, my name's Nick Tesla. I'm Brian McFadden. And we'd like to welcome you to the official, welcome you to the official podcast of Open Minds Everywhere. Um, still looking at the camera, damn brainstorming camera, not there no more, you know. Um, welcome everybody, thank you very much for joining us, we got a very special episode today. Um, today is the South Jersey Justice episode, okay, one Uh-oh. I've been wanting to, yeah, I've dun, been wanting dun, to touch dun, on this. Dun. This is for anybody who is interested in, uh, police misconduct and police corruption out there, uh, not just in New Jersey and the whole United States, obviously. Um, but if you're from New Jersey, this may be of more pertinent, uh, more pertinent of a show to you, or more of an interesting show to you than it may be for people outside of Jersey. But it's still, uh, it's a little hint into the corruption uh, behind the scenes in New Jersey politics and policing. So, uh, without further ado, I think we're just going to get right into it, Brian. Are, are you I ready? I think we are going to just. Delve right into South Jersey okay. justice. Okay, sounds good. Um, a lie has speed, but truth has endurance. Edgar J. Moe. Oh my God! Are you, I swear to God, if you're bringing in some fucking Alex Jones music on three N N, told no, you I didn't I'm want anyone trying to get the Imperial March from Star Wars. Oh, but it's still Alex Jones music. Oh man, he's killing me here. I don't want to. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, he's he's making my brain hurt. I'm gonna. I, I hate Alex Jones. Anyway, so you're now you're getting me started on Alex Jones, and I'm getting into the, the, the very important topic here. Thinking Nobody even Jones. said anything about Alex Jones. But you played Alex The Imperial Jones March from it. Star Wars goes with this topic. Which is Alex Jones' theme song. <laughs> that he stole from Star Wars. But it's still Alex Jones' theme song. It's man. Star Wars' fucking theme song. Uh, oh, I hate... Uh, all right, no more about Alex Jones. Um, <laughs> um, Sergeant Dale Baranowski. Keep in mind, I did not reach out to Sergeant Dale Baranowski. I do not know if he's even still local or even still alive. Okay? okay. I just know I came across this uh, this article and this site when it was still up. I'm, we're actually viewing this on the Wayback Machine, uh, archive.org. But I don't know where this guy's at. I read this literally in 2009, 2010 when the site was still up and found it very interesting. Quite interesting to say the least. Um it's it's really like you don't hear about New Jersey police corruption too often, you know. Like you you kind of get a sense that it's going on, but you don't hear about it too often. Other than from the guy down on the corner, or the, not the guy on the corner, the guy at the bar who said that fucking that this cop planted a, a dime bag in his car and and wrote him a ticket or took him down to the. the fucking jailhouse for the night or some shit you know what I'm saying but you don't really like I remember hearing a guy I worked with telling me a story about how the cops pulled him over and searched his car and ripped the back seats out of his car and found one little bag of heroin and he was like I didn't even do heroin I had never done heroin and like they were trying to tell me that that one little bag of heroin was mine and that they were charging me with and this and that and I knew they put it there because I was being a dickhead about them ripping the back of my car apart and I was just like it sounds like they were being dickheads fucking then they planted some shit in your car but you never know that's the only kind of shit you hear about you don't hear about news stories okay so this is dale m baranowski sergeant dale m baranowski of the west hampton police department uh from south jersey west hampton is close to uh burlington and willingboro and all that it's uh not terribly far Coast, from trenton County. not terribly far from trenton not terribly kind of middle far of the from state-ish. us you know yes yeah, middle of the state but it's still uh south jersey ish I guess you could say they still do a lot of work. Well, he grew up in Edgewater Park, which mm-hmm. is a town over from where we film. All right. Exactly. Edgewater Park is very close to here. But this is Sergeant Dale M. Baranowski for the 18th time, and he's not your typical crime victim. Okay? 
There's a lot of information on here. You used to have video excerpts. I don't believe they're even available to watch anymore. Maybe they are. I don't know. It says you can reach them. You can contact them. If anybody wants to know where you can find a copy of this and all of the other stuff, shoot us a message on the 3NM podcast page. It will end up being on wherewelied2.com. But where we lie to.com is looking like it's going to be ready at the end of summer. So if you can wait till the end of summer, then it'll be up then. If not, let us know. Uh, uh, message us on Facebook or something, and we can send you the link to this. Because it's really interesting. If you're from Jersey, you might really want to know about this. Maybe you don't. Like, I, at times, I've no, I haven't wanted to, to talk about this. This is pretty far down the rabbit hole. It's pretty far down the rabbit hole because we live in New Jersey. If we didn't live in New Jersey, if we were talking about Wisconsin, I don't think we'd be fucking giving, like, that many shits right now. We'd be much more yeah. open and willing to talk about it. But since this is local and we're actually in the uh, in the jurisdiction that we're discussing, okay, the, the jurisdiction that has this corruption that we're dis- the discussing, we're in currently at the moment. So you know, it's a little bit uh, a little bit scary to talk about. But you know what? We we can't be afraid of anything, and people need to know the truth. Okay, so and we have the First Amendment, and while we have it, we're going to use it. Yes, yes. All right, look, this is the way this guy puts it, and he makes a lot of good points. And for a cop, like, for a long time, I hated cops. And I came across this, and I was like, holy shit, there My are good cops. My was a cop. Fuck you. There are good cops out there. Well, no, when, right. you, when you think about it, there uh, some people have made the argument to me, and I, I think about it a lot, is a police officer is still no matter what. Yes, you might say it's a job, and they could be a good person, and they're, they're, they're just doing their job and this and that. But they're still enforcing policies that inherently they know at least half of the policies that they're enforcing are wrong and should not be enforced or put upon the, the American public. And instead of saying, well, that needs to change, or I don't want to be a part of that system, they don't do that. They don't do that whatsoever. They, they, I don't even fucking know. Zoning out. I'm, I'm all, I'm... They, uh, I'm in they left do field what now. they want. I got fucking knocked in the left field. Home run! All right, this is what he said. This site has evolved far beyond being about just me. When you buy a Volkswagen, you suddenly discover there are more Volkswagens on the road that you never noticed before. The same is true for victims of public corruption. You can skip to other victims to see for yourself and why it's important to get involved. None of the victims ever believed or thought for one minute that it would be them, as I'm sure you think as you read this. Exactly. And I never, honestly, I never thought that my, my own family, somebody in my family would be caught up in some sort of a police corruption thing and, and basically treated as if they were the problem instead of, well, holy shit, maybe there is a problem here, maybe we need to look at it. No, you're the problem because you're trying to say that we got the problem. You know what I'm saying? And it's the police are very defensive and they're very willing to cover up their their misdoings and misdeeds okay so uh, i had a little poem about attitude we won't even get into that it's from author unknown but um here you go let's just dive right into it um brian how do you want to go about this you want me to read like uh one or two paragraphs you read one or two paragraphs or uh sure where on the page are we we're down at problem the beginning the 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 red problem beginning It's, it's at the top it's I was like, just at the top. I don't have the red problem beginning. Yeah, are you on introduction? Where are you at? What's your page? I'm on the introduction. Under the the poem. Uh, under the poem. Under the attitude poem. Under the poem, I go straight into my name is Dale Baranowski. I grew up in a small town called Edgewater Park. You don't have any of the problem. Any of that. Uh, let me reload this page. All right. Well, now keep it up on my name is Dale Baranowski. I just reloaded the page. It's a there's his picture. There's his poem. There's my name is okay. Dale. Okay, hang tight. At my name is Dale. Okay, I'll read you all this real quick, and then uh, this is obviously from an updated one from 2011. Um, problem. The legal system in New Jersey is compromised. Not just a bit, not a lot, but totally. Imagine, if you will, that the legal system is a train on the tracks. Generally, it runs okay. Most cases get handled properly, minus the ones affected by incompetence. However, for when for any reason the situation calls for it, such as a certain name appears that needs to be insulated from accountability and justice, usually in order to gain and trade political favors, then a rail switch can be activated and the entire legal system is diverted from the main rails and onto a side rail that travels towards a dark tunnel where anything can, will, and does occur. Goal and objective. My ultimate aim in creating this website is to demonstrate how the U.S. and the state constitution can be suppressed on an at-will or as-needed basis. My objective is to bring you inside the belly of the beast 
so to speak, and using facts, evidence, proof, and sadly other victim cases only to expose how it occurs. I remain amazed that the open civil and criminal violations and the theft of the actual soul of the Constitution has been accomplished and had been for well over a decade. The drunk driver incident details the petty jealousies and rivalries that happen within a police department, and yes, every department has it to some degree, but usually the good truly outweigh the bad. But when that's not the case as here, then you have South Jersey justice. After the drunk driver, round two is the domestic violence incident. The expose takes the flowchart of corruption from the municipal level, envelops the county level, completely consumes the state's attorney general's office, and then gives the U.S. attorney's office a shot at showing their true colors. And you will find that they are not red, white, and blue. Who would have ever imagined those of you who will survive this trip with your factual clarity intact and not replaced by the rose-colored gas mask that in such a short time our great American would our great America would be laid low not from the outside terrorists but from within by the end of this website you will either accept this as fact get behind me in support and as the great sons and daughters of these great states help me get our rights back oh by the way I have fixed the problem you notice you're on February 7th, 2011. I, 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 I was... 100% now. All right. Um, you can I'm go to... It. My name is Dale Baranowski. My name... Oh, I'm sorry. Introduction. My name is Dale Baranowski. I grew up in a small town called Edgewater Park, New Jersey. Whoa, see, that's so close. All right. That is, next town over. Where my father was chief of police and, by all accounts, a damn good one. In 1986, I chose to follow in his footsteps. I became a police officer for West Hampton Township Police Department. In 1990, I was promoted to sergeant. Thereafter, my squads and I always led the police department in all areas of productivity while maintaining few, if any, citizen complaints. That's kind of impressive. Yeah. Indeed, the officers in my squad, as well as myself, even as sergeant, had work performance records far, <laughs> italicized far, superior to other squads combined. Yep. Sadly, being a good cop is not enough. Indeed, it can be a liability, as you will see. But I like mm-hmm. to think that I was chosen as a paladin in part for my <laughs> personal and professional integrity and attributes so that, first, I would survive, and secondly, bring justice to those who have degraded the legal system for their own ends and advantages and targeted others, past, present, and sadly, future victims. Uh, look, a leading uh, paladin is a leading champion of a cause. We are paladins, because we are leading champions. We are paladins. Nice. (laughs) This site will reveal rampant criminal conduct originating out of the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office, a.k.a. Burlington County Persecutor's Office. Mm -hmm. Evidence and facts will demonstrate that this disorganized crime ring enlisted the aid of several local police departments and dates from the present back to 1995. The list of victims involves both civilian and police officers in what can be termed localized terrorism. Strong words, but appropriate ones. It will show, by fact, how the corruption has infected the entire legal system, including the state's judiciary, from municipal to the county, and even the high courts, and how the New Jersey Attorney General's office has even been caught red-handed illegally covering for the criminal conduct of its subordinate, the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office. Even U.S. Attorney Chris... Okay. Even New Jersey Governor and Presidential Candidate Chris Christie won't help, yep, as you I will do. see lead, 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 later. All right, I'm going to read this quote from Robert Jackson, Supreme Court Justice, and I'll let you pick up after that if you can. Um, if the prosecutor... This is from Robert Jackson, Supreme Court Justice, whoever the hell that is. Maybe Supreme Court of New Jersey or maybe of the United States. Could be either or. Bear in mind, uh, we're reading the most recent update, which was February of 2011. Yes, yes. uh, But like I said, we're not really going to post a link to this. But if anybody wants it, we will send you a link to it. No problem. A-OK. Like me and Brian both have a link to it. I might put it on my Facebook. Hey, no problem. You can do that. I'm a little little more on the fence about sharing this I'm information freely, it, but openly I'm, I'm like that. I'm willing to give it to anybody that asked, but I'm not really willing to put it out there. The most I'm willing to put it out there is this podcast because it needs to be shared. And before this disappears from the, the like our, our WCW NWO uh, uh, page that we love to look at just disappeared from... It disappeared down it disappeared the disappeared into the ether, exactly. I know we've talked about that show quite a few times, and we're trying to do it. 
and the page that we so desperately wanted to find is just gone. It's gone. Yep, it yep. is gone. And it's funny how it's, so I have to do it from scratch. It's crazy and put it what it was talking it's about. It's going to take some time, but trust it's us, when we get it to it, it'll be worth yeah. the wait. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now this is Robert Jackson, Supreme Court Justice. If the prosecutor is obliged to choose his case, it follows that he can choose his defendants. Therein is the most dangerous power of the prosecutor that he will pick people that he thinks he should get rather than cases that need to be prosecuted. With the law books filled with a great assortment of crimes, a prosecutor stands a fair chance of finding at least a technical violation of some act on the part of almost anyone. In such a case, it is not a question of discovering the commission of a crime and then looking for the man who has committed it. It is a question of picking the man and then searching the law books or putting investigators to work to pin some offense on him. It is in this realm in which the prosecutor picks some person whom whom he dislikes or desires to embarrass or selects some group of unpopular persons and then looks for an offense. That the greatest danger of abuse... That the greatest danger of abuse of prosecuting power lies. It is here that law enforcement becomes personal, and the real crime becomes that of being unpopular with the predominant or governing group, being attached to the wrong political views, or being personally obnoxious to or in the way of the prosecutor himself. Exactly. If you know Jersey politics and you know me, wow, that's, that's so true. Now yeah. we're back to the page author's own writings. Yeah, yeah, good. I forget his name already. Yeah, Dale Baranowski. Dale. Okay, we're back to Dale talking. Dale. Why has this site been created? Nice to meet you, Because sometimes it becomes necessary to shame the law into action. Every conceivable law enforcement agency has been provided the opportunity to take action, and all have failed, most from intent. Also, all media sources were repeatedly contacted and asked to help expose what was happening to try to prevent any more victims. Mm -hmm. They, too, refused. Some reporters admitted that outside pressure was being applied to make sure no yep. stories were being published. So powerful has this corruption become. Yep. Politicians, police unions, FOP and PBA, governmental agencies at both the state and federal level, and even the ACLU were all contacted and requested to provide aid in any form. All refused. A list of those who, through act or omission, failed to render aid are listed on the Hall of Shame, which is a, another page on this website. Yep. While none of the inept culprits have the courage to publicly challenge or threaten this victim, what they may do under the cover of darkness is another matter. Therefore, as I expose the crimes, I also raise the threat level. If you think the movie Serpico revealed major corruption, hold on to your seats for this one. Serpico? I never even heard of Serpico. Neither have I. All right, this is Edward Everett Hale. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. What I can do, I should do. And what I should do, by the grace of God, I will do. Wow, that's pretty powerful right there. Hmm. All right. That is pretty powerful right there. You want me to continue? Uh, no, I'll go to Dale here. All right. Sometimes all it takes is one man to step up and do the right thing. In my battle against this corruption, I have never shirked my responsibility to combat crime. Never has my integrity or honesty been impeached. After having exhausted all remedies to bring those responsible to justice, I've elected in exposing them an illegal system in decay that allows such criminality to be managed through it. Then he has a little disclaimer under that. I have heard from several people, two to be exact, is that, that two is several? <laughs> That's a couple, <laughs> not several, but okay. Okay, that indicated that they thought sites such as this one offer only one side of the events. I do not know what else can be done. Whenever possible, I offer either the factual documents or excerpts from actual documents and statements. I offer anyone who wants to see anything the opportunity to do so by simply requesting them. While, many reply, while the many replies I have received have been extremely supportive and positive, I wanted to highlight the accuracy of this site's information. This site is fair and balanced, because, simply because there is little, if any, negative information towards me is simply a statement of the despicable nature of the subject matter, and not for lack of anything else. What may have started out as the proverbial he said, she said has evolved completely into a she said, she got caught they got caught mm. oh mark twain quote here Ooh, mark twain i love mark twain so do i samuel clemens the best thing about telling the truth is that you don't have to remember when you lied yep yep all right all right Brian, can you finish that up and then i'll, I'll get into the round <laughs> one the drunk driver a little bit this site can only handle so much information and for those who wish to be kept up to date or want more information or any help i can offer 
will be kept on a mailing list if so desired for periodic update notices. Also, I've created the update advisory page. However, some changes have been added throughout as I've become more proficient web-wise, so a good look over, too, is a good idea. To save web space, some things I can't upload or don't want to overwhelm the viewer. However, if anyone wants, most of the information I refer to is already scanned and can be emailed. Let the horror story begin. Ooh, let the horror story begin, indeed. So this is one of maybe about five or six stories, his main stories that he talks about, that Dale talks about on this site, um, which is no longer an active site. Um, it went down in 2012. But um, this is crazy, and this is going back almost 20 years now. But this is crazy. Once I read this, okay, I really understood there's a level of systemic corruption inside the, the New Jersey police that is really something else. So without further ado, I'll just dive right into it, okay? Let's do it. This first story needs to be told to lay the foundation for how the second matter came to be. Some critics would claim that this incident was the first sign of a cop gone bad, referring to myself. But cops like me can't go bad. It goes against our nature. One friend and fellow police officer gave me one of the highest compliments I have ever gotten. He told me that good cops learn to be such, but great cops are born. He said I was born to be a great cop. The f this first attack against me offers a glimpse into the way a system, even one involving law enforcement, goes bad. It is about good cops going bad and bad cops becoming worse. I am not the first, nor sad sadly will I be the last such victim. The facts of this case will show how some police officers, when given the opportunity, would be willing to break the law to take out a fellow police officer for personal retaliation or to eliminate professional rivalry for, advance ri rivalry for advancement. Having demonstrated this, it will be easier although perhaps more sinister to make the facts of the second incident easier to assimilate. Let's start in 1997. Discord was rising within my police department, West Hampton Township, New Jersey, due to poor administration from an inept chief. Morale could not become any lower. My squad and I chose to ignore the internal politics and concentrated on just doing our job. However, once the chief issued an illegal order to stop checking pedestrians and conducting, conducting traffic stops and from performing our sworn and oath-bound patrol duties and we refused to comply, we found ourselves to be the target of what I have coined cop-on-cop -cop crime. We were harassed and ridiculed for working, not only from above, but also from other officers in the department who felt we were making them look bad. As a Ooh. police officer, I always maintain high work ethics and morals. I always operated on the premise that I would do my job to my utmost. This is reflected by my early promotion to sergeant after just four years as a patrolman. It was my simple idea that the best way to judge a worker is by his work record. When I became sergeant, I added to this work style of leading by example. My squads always led the police department in almost all areas of productivity, i.e. 70% of the total drunk driving arrests, 50% of the total drug arrests. Even as a road sergeant, and only my own men came close to my own work performance. Conversely, crime always seemed to happen on the other squads and not ours, or at the least was considerably lower on our watch. This is testament to the diligence we applied in being proactive. We didn't just do the glory details. We also made sure people and things were safe within our borders. My last squad and I were always volunteered for night shift and so remained together, also in part because the non-workers did not want to be assigned to a working squad. It's called a paycheck, and we thought it should be earned. Go figure. Huh. As I said then, only they could make themselves look bad. In essence, this was a two-pronged attack. Retaliation from a jaded police chief who imagined conspiracies against his position due to his incompetence. And a professional elimination by internal affairs officer, Sergeant Reed of a rival and a far superior patrol sergeant, <coughs> yours truly. Sergeant Reed obtained his promotion only through the good graces of the department's police union. We felt bad that he could not pass the sergeant's test. Reed could only obtain a 69, wherein a 70 was the passing score. Indeed, he was only promoted because of support from the then police association to assume the position of detective sergeant, an obsolete and non-sought-after position. The idea being that such an uncoveted position would allow Reed to obtain a position that would have been otherwise unattainable to him. Reed, however, was not content with this since all the current road sergeants were sufficiently intelligent enough to warrant passing whatever promotional testing that might come. Reed needed to eliminate the competition if he ever hoped to gain any higher positions. He started with the top choice first, me. He also knew that I would be the first to stand up to any shady attempts to circumvent the promo promotional process, which he had already tried when he expressed his, his desire to change the promotional process to next in line, which, as the most senior, would mean he 
he would be promoted by default. No testing when the chief retired. Reed began by following through on a drunk driver's attempt to escape justice by filing a false allegation of police abuse after his arrest, a not uncommon trick and one which the suspect used before in another jurisdiction. In March of 1997, what was becoming a hostile work environment took a turn for the more criminal aspect. I will let the investigation report from that night tell what happened. And here is he the report. He uploads the actual report. Yeah, yeah, of course. He uploads the actual yep. report. That's what I like about all these. These are the actual reports. So it's not like he's a, oh, I typed all this in for you. This is what the report said. Now, this is the actual report itself, okay? Um, it says, accused attempted to elude in a motor vehicle, then on foot, okay? And this is what the, the report says. The undersigned was parked next to... Uh, PTL patrolman Caulfield at the Tarnsfield, I think. Right. Tarnsfield Swim Tarnsfield Club, Swim Club on, on Tarnsfield, Tarnsfield Road. Road. I heard a vehicle coming south on Tarnsfield Road. I could hear the vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed. I then observed the vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed because 40 miles or between 40 miles per hour and 45 miles per hour. This is a re- residential zone, and the legal speed is 25 miles per hour. As I began to leave this park, leave the parking lot to go after the vehicle, I remembered that this vehicle had been involved in a similar incident last Halloween and had fought, fled then. As I pulled onto Transfield Road, or Tarnsfield, Tarnsfield Road. Road, I observed the vehicle had shut off its lights. The vehicle took a right on the Greenwich Drive without stopping. As I approached Greenwich Drive, I could see that the vehicle was traveling at a high rate of speed as it sped towards the... Bend on Bend Greenwich, on Greenwich Drive. Drive prior to Churchill Drive. Believing that the accused would be attempting to get to Lawrence Lane, I t- turned left onto Greenwich Drive. At Greenwich Drive and Churchill, I looked down Churchill. I observed the vehicle on Churchill. All right. Traveling towards me with no lights on, as I made a right turn onto Churchill Drive, the vehicle pulled over to the right curb. In front of 7 Churchill Drive... As I approached the now-parked vehicle, I witnessed the accused exit the driver's side. The accused was wearing a black coat and black pants. The accused ran to the rear of the truck and turned left into the playground area. I was able to actually pull next to the accused. I what? I yelled, yelled for him to stop that he was under arrest. The accused continued on. We continued to the rear of the houses. As the accused jumped over the rear yard fences of what? Number three, Churchill Number three, Drive. Churchill Drive. I exited my patrol vehicle and again yelled for him to stop, that he was under arrest. The accused jumped the fence of number three, Churchill, at the front yard. I followed. He ran across the street to the side of number three, Churchill Drive. Number he jumped, four, side of number oh, four. Oh, okay, side of number four, Churchill Drive. He jumped onto an outside ground-mounted air conditioning unit, then up on top over the rear yard fence of number four, Churchill. I made it to the top of the fence and with my flashlight watched the accused run to the right. I elected to run to the end unit and then to the rear. At the rear of the houses, I could hear the accused crashing through the woods to the rear of 91 Greenwich Drive. I watched him scale the rear yard fence. He appeared to lose his balance and actually fell over. I heard him hit the, hit the ground then. I heard, I heard him hit the ground on the other side. I looked over the fence and saw the accused getting up and running di- diagonally to the front of the yard. I checked over the fence and noticed several three noticed several tree stumps. I advised Patrolman Caulfield of the accused accused's location. The accused was attempting to locate the gate for the fence. I again yelled for him to stop. The accused began walking away again when Patrolman Caulfield entered the rear yard. As he was instruction as he was instructing the accused to set to his knees or to get to his knees. I jumped the fence, being careful to miss the tree stumps. I approached the accused, who was now now on his his knees. I began repeatedly telling him to get down. The accused refused to lie down. He began to argue that he wasn't driving and that he didn't do anything. I again ordered him... I missed... I lost my shot. I again ordered him to lay flat. He again refused. I initiated a strike to his right common peroneal... I don't know what that is. In preparation to take him all the way to the ground. Once completed, once completed and while he was distracted, I forced him to the ground. Patrolman Caulfield told him to get his hands out to the sides. After several attempts, the accused complied, then put his arms back along his sides. At last, a last warning was issued to put his arms or to put his hands at his back. He complied and was handcuffed. The accused was escorted to the roadway, searched, and placed in Patrolman Caulfield's patrol car. 
then transported to the station after I removed the truck keys from his pants pocket. Ah, sorry, my eyes are like, yeah. it's so small, it's, it's hard to read it, but I'm almost there. All right, I walked back to the truck, and after placing the, the ignition key in the ignition, checked the interior. Inside, I located the registration and insurance card. Also discovered on the passenger floor was an opened, almost totally consumed bottle of Jack Daniels liquor. Oh, Jesus. This was kept as evidence. Uh, Patrolman Landell stood by for the vehicle impound while I went to the station. At the station, the accused indicated that he hadn't been driving and that we were wrong. I advised him that he was under arrest for driving while intoxicated. He was read the DWI packet, to which he refused both requests to submit to the breathalyzer. He also refused to take any balance tests. The accused was taken to Rancocos Valley Hospital as he was complaining of pain in his left side, or in his side. He also had several small cuts and abrasions on his hands and a cut across the bridge of his nose from the chase over the fences. Through the water... Through the woods, uh, through the woods, and evidently his fall over the last fence. After being cleared by the hospital, he was committed to Bronte County Jail in default of the twenty-five hundred dollar bail, authorized by Jub- Judge Maine. Oh, Judge Maine! I don't like Judge Maine. A check of his license revealed that a proper proposed suspension was issued, but not yet ordered for persistent violator. The accused was charged with the following motor vehicle charges: careless driving, reckless driving, DWI, refusal. Required lamps blocking driveway, driving with open alcohol. Also to be noted, uh, hold on. Wait, say, as, as I completed, yeah, this as I report. completed this report, I noticed that I had not issued the accused the stop sign violation at Tarnsfield Road and Greenwich Drive. Considering the abundance of the existing charges, I elected not to rectify this oversight. <laughs> also to be noted is that the girlfriend and the accused accuses sister came to the station. I apprised them of the incident. The girlfriend, Tracy, stated, Stupid ass me. I sent him to get cigarettes and he had to get gas. This conversation was recorded on my in-car camera mic slash tape in the foyer of the police station. The tape was kept as evidence. The tape time showing was 1.28 a.m. when the statement was made. I went back to the incident location when it was laid out and took 35 millimeter pictures of the path of the chase. Prior to the accused leaving the station and due to his allegation that by kick-landed... Oh, that my kick landed on his ribs and that the pain there was not due to his fall over the fence. I examined his tuxedo jacket and observed no marks of any kind, even though both of us had some some what mud slash dirt on our clothing in other places. Also, while observing the accused, he did not make any of the typical movements or compensations for having an ailing rib alleged. injury. Alleged. in rib injury. In fact, when he took his jacket off, then put it back on just prior to leaving, no signs of any physical injury of the nature described were observed. This can also be seen on the in-station tape. Any allegation of pain seemed seen to be, what's that say? Conveniently, Conveniently intermittent. Intermittent. Wow, that thing was hard to read. My eyes were just like getting like worse and worse as I'm reading it. Alright, Brian, can you uh, continue on with uh, the several I days? can, just as soon as I zoom back out, because I had to zoom very yeah, far Yeah, trying to read that. Yeah, isn't it that? Great? Oh my god, my that eyes were... That was just... Ugh. Uh, okay. Several days after this incident, this three-time drunk driver came to the police station to file an allegation of police misconduct. The suspect had nothing to lose by trying this tactic. He was facing a 10-year loss of license. Now I don't. Now I don't complain that the initial complaint was taken. All complaint policies require it. The problem is when it is suspected that the complaint is false. Sergeant Reed took the suspect's statement even though it was clear from the report that the suspect was lying. The suspect, for no logical reason except to have a witness and alibi, stated to Reed that he and his girlfriend had been together and that she had jumped out and he was allegedly just minding his own business looking for her when the nasty bad cops for no reason began chasing him. The initial police report above which we just read, Uh includes the existence of a tape recording of the girlfriend who said she was not with the suspect. See, having had past experience with this suspect from a previous police chase just several months before, I was wary and on guard. Therefore, I had activated my belt microphone that tied into our police car's in-camera video audio system. As you can see above, the conversation was also noted verbatim in the police investigation report on the last page. Clearly, Uh she was never with the suspect, as they claimed, since she was recorded as saying she had sent him out to get her cigarettes. Uh Aha, caught in a lie. Uh Uh-oh. Sergeant Reed then interviewed the girlfriend, Tracy Laukis, 
since she was supposedly in the truck and the area as alleged by the suspect. It is important to note that procedurally, while internal complaints, even anonymous ones, are required to be investigated, false allegations of police misconduct are to be treated just as seriously. Indeed, there is a warning required to be told to the complainant that any false complaints would result in criminal action against them. As soon as the suspect and his girlfriend made the statements that she was there at the incident location and time, knowing that this wasn't true, the complaint now became a criminal act. Mm. Also revealed was the beginning of a conspiracy to do so with the help of Sergeant Reed. Sergeant Reed knew by way of the investigation report that I had tape recorded the conversation between Tracy Laucus and myself when she came to the police station after we had the suspect arrested and did nothing when they stated she had been with the suspect knowing this was false. He should have taken police action against them if his intentions were honest. Chief Harper, even without any real police abilities, had to know this too. Sergeant Reed, while clearly not the brightest, had been on the job long enough and had just been trained as the department's internal affairs officer. Mm -hmm. Ah. He could not overlook this falsehood, but he did. Indeed, when he deposed the next year, Sergeant Reed swore under oath that the two versions, the suspects and the girlfriends, were consistent with each other's. Hmm. Which obviously we just learned they are not. All right, and then he's got the depositions on here. We won't go through the yeah, depositions. That, that's they're a, a little bit long, long, and they're even smaller than the last thing. So I think yeah, my eyes. I, my are gonna, eyes can't do that. I think my eyes are going to crust up and and dry the fuck out if I try and read that. All right. Um, has already demonstrated from the very beginning nothing could be further from the truth that the suspects and the girlfriend's statements matched. But there are more examples. This is where the total volume of the pretense by Reed and his poor lying actually begin to make it difficult to follow. It becomes a pathological liar tra- trail. The suspect stated that. On the night in question that he went had went to his brother's wedding, he confirmed that the girlfriend did not go to the wedding or the reception because there was a personal conflict between a member of the wedding party and his girlfriend. Hmm, okay. So, now, remembering that the girlfriend said she wasn't even with the suspect as caught on the audio tape, here's her statement stating that she went to the wedding with the suspect. Question, all right, obviously you didn't go to the reception. A, no, only to the wedding. Okay. But we're getting there. Obviously, the suspect and his girlfriend were intentionally lying, and Sergeant Reed was helping. But let's take it further and show how Chief Harper handled getting direct information that this was the case when he was approached by Officer Ingling, who learned from the suspect's sister-in-law, whose wedding the suspect had been coming home from on the night in question, drunk as she thought. She stated to Officer Ingling that she had been approached by the suspect's family and was asked to lie and then some. No official statement was ever taken from her as to not damage the flimsy setup already in progress. The letter recounting of what transpired between Chief Harper and Officer Ingling speaks volumes. Do you want to read that, Brian? The letter? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little long, isn't it? But that's it. Yeah, how about you read the first? Do you read okay. April? I'll read May. To right. Sergeant Dale Baranowski from... Patrolman Daniel Ingling, subject, internal investigation. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Dear Dale, Dale, April 10th, 1997. While in the Wawa, Wood Lane and Orchard today, I was approached by the manager, Connie Caceres, regarding the investigation into the allegations made against you by her brother-in-law, David Caceres. Connie told me that David was lying regarding the excessive force allegations, that he was so drunk on the night of the incident he didn't remember what happened. She is aware of this because the night of the incident was the night of her wedding to David's brother Orlando. She had seen him when he left and hoped that he wouldn't drive. She told me that he has a serious drinking problem and that everyone in the family has tried to convince him to get help. Uh. She also said that she, that she received a call from David's mother regarding the incident and subsequent investigation. Connie said that Mrs. Caceres asked her to lie if she was questioned by any West Hampton officer investigating the incident. She told Connie that if she was approached about the incident, she would say that she was that she has overheard West Hampton officers in Wawa talking about David Caceres and how they were all out to get him. Connie was appalled by the request from a family member that she lie to an officer during an official investigation and said that she has always thought the West Hampton police to be very courteous and fair. As I understand it, this has caused a real problem with the family. She did not want to see you or any other officer suffer for David's fabricated story. 
She, she said that she felt that his motivations were a civil suit against the township at a later date. Connie said that she would be willing to give a statement regarding these facts. All right, so we'll go to Ooh. May 7th. So that was April 10th, 1997. Now here's May 7th, 1997, the same letter. I was unsure of what to do for a couple weeks because I really don't didn't want to involve Connie in, in the incident. I finally decided to approach the chief because I felt it was important as to the credibility of David Caceres. I went to him and gave him all of the information that I had from Connie. His response was that he didn't think it would help, but he would pass it on to Bruce. He said that Dale had burned a lot of bridges, and I don't think anyone really cares what happens to him at this point. I told him that many people do care. He also said, I don't know how many times I have to tell these guys to leave the residents alone. Dale's just so damn defiant. He said that this never would have happened if you guys laid low as he had ordered. I took that to mean the meetings that he had with each of the squads asking us to slow down on traffic enforcement and pedestrian checks until some of these lawsuits blow over. He had some obvious anger that your squads, that your squad was still aggressively pursuing police work when he had called for a stand down. He also said that they uncovered a lot of problems during this investigation and that if these guys think they're going to come out of this thing smiling, they're wrong. Patrolman Caulfield came up during our conversation. He said that he didn't think he was going to make it. He said that Caulfield worshipped you and that he wouldn't listen to anyone else. I told him that with Daryl's strong religious beliefs, I don't think that he would appreciate the term worship being used toward you. His response was, yeah, that's a whole other issue. Rolling his eyes as if to say his religious beliefs somehow interfere with his job. September 15th, 1997. I had just come back to work after I was out for the birth of the baby. The chief called me in to talk about the letter I had written in the follow-up letter asking that he investigate the removal of the letter from the mail bins. He said that he didn't want me to think that he had forgotten me. I told him that I felt it was inappropriate for anyone to censor what was distributed to the officers through the mail bins. He said that Bruce was in charge during that time and that he didn't feel that the letter was appropriate. The chief said that it should have been placed on the FOP board instead of in the mail bins. He then addressed the contents of the letter. He said that he was surprised that I described challenging the system as a positive thing with my having a military background. He asked me what would happen if I challenged an order in the military. I told him that he had missed my point and that I was not talking about challenging individual orders, but rather lack of progress in stagnant or outdated policy. He said, Dale is just so defiant and he constantly questions my authority. I'm just not going to have a guy like that working for me. He said that he gets so many letters from you that he doesn't know when you have time to do your job. I told him that I challenge him to compare your work record with that of anyone else here, and he thinks that you're not doing your job. If he thinks, if he thinks that you're not doing your job. So that's just a little preview. A little preview. And you think, like police stations no they're all on the same side and this and that and it's like when you, you hear about a uh, police station like and this is jersey yes of course this is jersey things are a little bit different in jersey but think about any if you're anywhere in the country think about your uh, your local police station and um if, if there's been any kind of misconduct or anything like that there may actually be police officers in that uh, that police station or within that squad who or within that force who actually are trying to do the right thing, are trying to expose corruption and things of that of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So it's actually it's it's it makes you feel good because I've I've heard people say that all police officers are pieces of shit. And when you hear somebody like this, it's like, yes, like I was honestly I was I was listening to earlier listening to myself talk about this earlier, and um, I was hearing him say that they they had the most. Uh, drug arrests and the most um, drunk driving arrests and this and that and I was like drunk driving arrests that's great but drug arrests I don't know like you might be like you for all you know you're fucking up people's lives and you think you're doing a good job and you you're getting good uh, good stats for the police department and this and that you know what I'm saying and it's like in all reality you think you're being a good cop and you're ruining some people's lives where you might have busted a 16 year old kid for a fucking quarter quarter ounce of marijuana and he ended up having to go to like therapy and boot camp and all this other kind of shit for some shit that really he didn't need to go to. He was fucking. Sure. He was going to headed to a party. He was trying to fucking smoke some weed at that party, and it, it's not fucking. He didn't need to go to boot camp and all this other shit. So in all reality, like Dale thought he was a really good cop, but when it came down to it, all that stuff aside, he's a good person who was not going to sit by and just let everybody uh, 
let corruption go on. And when he tried to step up for it, they tried to shit on him. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to stand for it. You know what I'm saying? And of course he's not stand for it because he came out with this website. One thing I would like to do if I can eventually afford it is I'd like to keep this website up. Is put the website back up. Oh shit, oh shit, Nick, it back it's up. a conspiracy, Nick. Yeah, I know that the site is no longer working. I know. Now that we're we're looking at it, the site is no longer working. Now that we're both looking at it and we're actually <laughs> recording a show and filming a show about it, the site is Oops, no longer, something went wrong. Exactly. Please try it again. I just tried to reload the page myself. To I tried to reload one of the other times to see if there was anything extra added onto the end of one of the other ones that maybe yeah. he deleted, and it wouldn't load. It, it reloads this one because it's cached in my computer. Well, I can't even get a reload. Exactly, Brian. Something a little bit. I do have it saved somewhere as PDF and PDF form all the pages, and I had it, I actually do have it printed out somewhere too as well. But uh, So if, it, if for some reason it got removed as we're talking about it, it's okay because I have copies of wouldn't it. Wouldn't that be interesting? But, uh, hey, that would I cannot. Proof. Yep, I cannot open it at all, that, dude. That I just, just tried to totally reload it well, from the Wouldn't link. that just prove that that uh, the whole data collection and then controlling the data and controlling how we act and what we can do and shit like that by your collection of data, real time and past. Holy shit! They mastered real time the human shit. Domain. Real time. They got us mastered with the help dude. of net neutrality. Look, they've mastered. This isn't the human even live, domain. dude. This isn't even fucking live. They've got us mastered, and it's not even fucking live. That's the saddest part. Is they're they're I, listening I to this recorded phone, show, yeah. and it's not even being recorded. Live. Ain't that great? It's just because my computer's connected to the internet, so anything so we record mine, through so these microphones, it's actually picking up and knows. Hold up, this site shouldn't be up anymore. That's a bad thing, especially with. Chris Christie running for president right now. We don't want this we, yeah, site. We don't up. want this site with his name on it. It's okay. Hey, I still got copies. So if anybody wants a copy of this site and it's not up yeah, for some I want reason a after this, copy of this site. I, I have copies. one that works. Right, like, so that was actually dude, a lot of fun. This is terrible. We'll uh, we'll have to touch on. We got drunk driver number two and number three. We'll touch on that on another day. Those are some pretty interesting ones. And then you also have a few domestic violence stories on there. And it's all about the, the police just covering it up. You know, covering that shit up and uh, to covering it up. The police. Um, basically, like I know one of the drunk driving ones is there was a teenager who was caught drunk driving and ran from the cops. And when he got caught, um, basically he got arrested and taken to, to the police station and charges filed on him or whatever and this and that. But then like a week later, the officer went to like look at the charges or went to look at the file for it. And it was all closed and, and closed out. And he went to ask about it. And he's like, oh, that's a friend of the uh, judge or some shit like that. And no, a friend of the judge's son. We're not going to let him get a drunk driving thing. And he's like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Like, it's something like that. So trust me, we got to come go. back and touch Ladies and again. gentlemen, there you go. You saw it happen live on the air on three. CNN, we just got censored. Yes, yes. Can you believe that? That was that's that was thing. that's. I don't believe in coincidence, and there's I'm only one explanation for that. Two and three are coming up. No, no. Oh, oh, wait, hold wait, on, wait, hold wait, on, wait, hold on. Is it working? What do we got? It's still taking a second. It's still it's taking trying. a second. It's, it's doing really something. Trying. It's doing something, Brian. It's doing something. Is it back up? I shut my laptop off. I gave up. He gave up, folks. He gave up. No, if it's taking this long, there's no way. There's no way, Brian. Ready? Here it comes. Error. It Brooklyn Museum. Oh, Brooklyn Museum. Error. Oh. Brooklyn Museum. Error. Oops, something went wrong. Wow, can you believe they took it down, bro? They took it down. Even though, look, they got all those While we things. were talking about it. MS DOS. Ah, I want the software sites. All right. Shareware CD. Look at all the Internet Arcade. Look at all that stuff. Vintage software. I still like archive.org. It's a pretty cool website. All right. On that note, everybody have a great week. This has been a pretty fun uh, 3 and 34 Not as uh, fun With as a kind of bit week. of a creepy ending. Made it an even scarier topic to delve into. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? If, the, if there's a comment headed this way or Jade Helms about to institute martial law or some other crazy shit like that, then you know what? Uh, the, this, that doesn't mean shit. But if that doesn't, all that shit doesn't happen, if there's not about to, if the comment doesn't hit and we get to December of this year, then you know what? That's, that's like, this is a keeper. This episode's a keeper, and we need to share this with people. And this is going to be a little clip, because we now have uh, brainstorming. I'd like to call them brain farts, but they're not. Um, hold on. Brainstorming, brainstorming neural nuggets. So keep a lookout for brainstorming neural nuggets. We got uh, their little clips. They're about five to ten minutes long, usually um, around, like, uh, sometimes under five minutes, sometimes close to ten minutes, but usually no more than ten minutes. Um, and you can catch little clips of episodes. So if you don't get a chance to watch the whole entire episode, you can at least catch a, a few little clips of few what nuggets. we talked about, a few neural nuggets. 
to uh, build some neural connections in your brain. So uh, on that note, um, and we'll also we're doing the same thing for 3NN. I don't know why I just said that for brainstorming, like we're still on brainstorming. But um, 3NN will also have uh, 3NN Neural Nuggets. So make sure you check those out as well. You can find us on YouTube.com slash where we lied to. God willing. Uh, Facebook.com slash where we lied to. God willing. Um, <laughs> what do you call Facebook.com slash 3NN Podcast. And also, Unless it gets taken down because of this episode. It could be. We could get completely banned. Me and Brian could disappear because of this episode. And if we do... That's just crazy how that website disappeared while we were in the middle of talking it's about creepy, it. Brian. It's creepy, It just disappeared and got flushed down the rabbit hole. It is creepy. It's almost like we were just hitting on too many keywords. And right? Like, keywords. Yeah. We're just like, it's what like, are they talking about? <laughs> oh, they're talking about this website? Okay, take no, that website take down. Take that website yep. down now. <laughs> So it's like I can, almost, I can almost see the little Fuck guy you, net neutrality. in the little fucking room. You know how they got the machines going in the back. It sounds like a newsroom. Like some, some like old dude who hasn't seen down. daylight in days. There's one big red button that just says shut down that website. And that's what they did is shut down our Bloop. website. Anyway, um, I guess everybody have a great week. Like I said, uh, check out... Uh, Brainstorming podcast Wednesdays at 8 p.m. And of course, our favorite, your favorite, the world's favorite uh, official podcast of Open Minds Everywhere. Um, also, I wanted to give a shout out to a, a certain show out there that I came across and I'm a big fan of because they are not afraid to talk about anything. Not afraid to talk about anything. Okay. Just like us. And I love it. Buzzsaw. If you get a chance, check out Buzzsaw on... It's Buzzsaw with Sean Stone. I don't think it's called Buzzsaw with Sean Stone, but Sean Stone's the host. Okay. And uh, Oliver Stone's son. Yeah. And it's actually pretty good. And, he, and they'll touch on anything. because he was on Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura on he was. Ted Turner's True TV. He was. And, you know uh, hey, hey, you know what? It's a little low-key. It's not like... It's not... Alex Jones style, and I think they're trying to be the anti Alex so Jones, and I like kind of like that. The Hawks on RT. Well, it's She's not so involved. In. It's not um, like this. It's not like oh, oh my god. All right, so what's going on, folks? You got to get upset. It's like <laughs> the way they're talking is kind of like normal. Like we actually talk a little more excited than they normally. All right, it's gonna be exactly. 1776. They're um, it's a much more calm show, but what they talk about is some crazy stuff. And I've really uh, begun to enjoy Buzzsaw. I've been watching it a lot, so um, uh, I wanted to give them a shout out. I uh, give a shout out to Sean Stone for uh, the great work. You know, even if Sean Stone. Uh, who knows? Why who don't knows? you come on the show, buddy? Who knows what he's a part of? Who knows? But hey, he's Sean, a part of that show, and I like show, that show, please. and they, they'll talk about anything. They're not scared to talk about things, whereas a lot of other conspiracy shows or shows that like to talk about um, talk about alternative subjects refuse to touch on certain things. They just had a show on the gin. I don't know if you know what the gin is. Yeah, I'm familiar. But they just had a show on the gin and shadow people and something else, and it's like, whoa, what the fuck? And I thought, honestly, I thought shadow people was just something that people who were taking bath salts saw. <laughs> but apparently shadow people is like, it's kind of like in a ghost sense, is something that people have been experiencing a lot within the past few years. So uh, I don't know. Check out Buzzsaw if you get a chance. Um, once again, 3NM Podcast. It's the shit. Check it out every Wednesday, 9 p.m. And if you're in New Jersey... Stop by Weed Man's Joint in Trenton. And also, uh, we'll give you a little heads up on a upcoming guest uh, within the next month or so. Um, it's just a little hint. We ain't telling you who the guest is. But if you get a chance, uh, if you're on Google or you're on YouTube and you're, you're fucking around and you ain't got nothing better to do and you're bored and you want to watch something, check out The Quest. Look for The Quest reality TV show and watch a little bit of that. And uh, let us know what you think about that. And that's just a little hint as to our upcoming guest and the next couple or the next month or so month month and a half something like that um we got a, we got guests starting to line up or the guest yes. list is starting to actually it's not filling up but it's starting to fill out i'll tell you what it's starting to it's not filling up but it's we filling don't out have a lot of guests but the ones we we do might have, we also might guys. have a sponsor we might also have a sponsor on, on the horizon be like how the hell did they get that guy and i'll tell you what if we get this sponsor that i'm talking to i'm we're going to be very uh very happy and excited and i uh, can't wait to share that sponsor with you and and their amazing product that they sell and trust me we're not about making money here this or that and i can tell you from the get-go neither me or brian are going to collect any kind of monies or any kind of funds from um from our sponsor that we are talking to or in negotiations with right now we will be receiving food as our payment so we we need what we need we don't need what we want we need what we need and me and brian are not the we're not we're not rich white men, you know what I'm saying? So 
We, you got that blonde hair, blue eye thing food. going there. So I do, that man. Kinda, I'm, I'm, that, that, that scares me. Are you um, are you, you call, reptilian elite from the series? I'm what star? you call a, a handsome human being. That's what you call me. Nick is reptilian. I've been watching human. a lot of crazy stuff, Brian. I knew you were Rick I've been Moranis, watching a lot of crazy stuff. Brian, I've been watching a lot of crazy stuff, and I really believe that. And I thought this before, and I kind of like, you put it out of your mind because it can drive you insane, especially when you see certain people. But uh, I believe we're surrounded by either aliens or some sort of um, life form that is not human, that takes on a human form that is around us almost all the time in society and in public and mixed in with us. There is some sort of a form that is not human that may live a completely human it life, may go symbiotic. home and sleep in its bed, it's but it's Jets not Jets. a human being. There's something Odo. It's separate Odo. to it. He's I don't know. And that's some freaky, that's some weird shit. So I'm not going to get too much more into that until I can give you more information of what I believe that could be. Because for, uh, for a while, I thought it was shapeshifters. And I'm starting to believe, I don't know if it's shapeshifters. I believe it might be, if it is some form of shapeshifters, it's some form of, some of some form of interdimensional type of shit and that's going on. I just want to on. say to the one smart ass sitting at home right now going, It's Blue Beam! It's Blue Beam! Shut the hell up! Well, he ain't got his open mind cap on. You know, put your open mind caps on. That would be a cool hat. The 3 and N hat where your mind, it's like literally you see your brain up here, uh-huh. and it's your open mind cap. Hey, that'd be you know pretty what I'm cool. Saying? Be and cool. then for brainstorming we'll, have your, brainstorming, we'll have your thinking cap. You hey, know what I'm saying? Ideas. Your brainstorming cap. All right. On that note, everybody have a great week. Uh, it's been a wonderful time, and we will see you next week at 9 p.m. for 3 n Podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out Where We Lied To. Where We Lied To.com, YouTube.com slash Where We Lied To. And Facebook.com slash Where We Lied To. And hey, Facebook.com slash The Real Nick Tesla. Oh. It's The Real Nick Tesla. It's The Real Nick Tesla, folks. Yeah. And uh, we are Changed New Jersey. Don't forget. Yes, uh, we are Changed we are, New Jersey. We are Changed New Jersey. We are We are Changed New Jersey. And we we'll are. be coming out with some new videos soon. Me and Brian are going to uh, we're going to overhaul the We Are Changed New Jersey brand and, and name and really start to do some special stuff with a little bit of Jersey attitude and spice. A little bit of spice and every Everything nice. Yay. Nice. All right, everybody have a great week. We'll see you. Peace. See ya. Peace. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to check out NJ Weedman's joint. Great food. Yum, 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 yum. Nom, 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 nom. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>